just gone on to the YouTube, um, to YouTube, onto the internet. <laughs> And I was going to do a big video, but I can't because I'm frazzled. And that's why my words are getting jumbled up, because I'm frazzled out. Because I've got so much going on, and yet I'm achieving nothing. It's bizarre. I've got so many people. Like, I just want a little piece of you. Then there's the dogs. And then I'm working seven days at the moment. But only my two days off, three days off, are uh, doing the toilets. But it still means I've only got... 25 minutes before I'm at work again so I feel like I'm just not getting no done do you know what I mean so anyway I'm gonna do a big video when I get the chance because it's been almost eight years since I left the rat race nearly not completely but nearly so I'm gonna do a vlog on that but when I saw this picture of my house and this is the actual bedroom that you can see <laughs> I did that because I liked purple and when I, when I went to sell the house the lady who came out to take the photos the estate agent said it's very niche and what I suggest you do is paint everything neutral and I said no I can't be bothered it'll just go as it is so it, that was my purple bedroom and I loved it but it was haunted and it was haunted good so there's a a few stories I can talk around but I'm going to concentrate on this because I'm good at sidetracking myself in that bedroom there was two dolls houses and one of them was a Victorian dolls house and it was a collector's item and all the furniture was in there and it was all like Victorian style and the dolls in there were Victorian dolls with the long dresses and the daddy he had a, a suit and a cravat because he was really posh and I, I loved the doll's house because I, ne I never really had one as a child like that and I loved the idea of living in a Victorian house but I thought I'm never going to get the chance so that was like the next best thing to have a doll's house of the house I would like to live in so I got this doll's house and it was in the corner of my bedroom in the alcove on top of a set of drawers and it was about three or four feet high it was a three-story doll's house and I, I just put all the dolls and things in the house so daddy was for example I put him in the bathroom by the mirror and the sink so it looked like he was having a shave and then mummy would be making dinner and everyone else was doing something else and it was just an ornament really but I liked it but I started to notice it would get moved about and it was only little things like in the morning I'd get up and I think that's strange daddy last night was in the bathroom mirror having a shave and this morning he's laid on his back with his leg up his back and I thought that's weird how's that happened you know even if it had fallen over by accident, it was quite a rigid doll that, you know, they didn't just bend very easily. You had to manipulate them yourself. So I thought it's strange how he's laid on his back with his leg up. <laughs> his leg up behind him like somebody's just thrown him down there and broken his leg. But I started to notice quite often that Daddy was getting it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen with any of the others so mummy was always all right and the babies they were fine and the doggies and everything but the daddy seemed to be getting a bit terrorized in the doll's house and i thought oh this is my ex but i was still living with my ex at the time but i was in my own room and i had a double lock on my door and I kept the door locked because I didn't want nobody going in my bedroom because my teenage daughter at the time was a bit of a tea leaf and she'd go in there and steal my jewellery and I'd never see it again and I didn't trust my ex at the time so I thought I don't want no one in my room I'll make sure nobody gets in so nobody could have possibly gotten in but I still accused them <laughs> and they'd go mad and go how can it be us when we can't even get in there and how can it be us when you slept in there last night with your door locked and you saw it in the morning and I'm like mm, you're right 
So I thought, right, there's definitely something dodgy going on. Now, I have got other stories to tell you about the poltergeist in my house. I have had lots of poltergeist activity in the house. But I'm concentrating on the doll's house one. So it became more and more bizarre anyway. And it got to a point where the it was like the doll's house was getting smashed up to bits inside it. Even the furniture was getting broken in the room where the daddy was. And I thought, nah, come on, this is bizarre. So because of all the other paranormal activity everywhere else, I thought I'm, I've got no choice but to get a paranormal team. Now, I had a friend at the time who was a psychic investigator and she had a team in based in West Yorkshire. And she said, let me come round to your house and we'll come round with all the equipment and we'll have a look and see what we think. So they came out. I've had two lots of paranormal teams in my house over a period of um, three years. But this is that, that one particular story I'll tell you about. So a lady came and her husband who's since passed and a, a friend of mine and a few of his friends so there was about five of them and then some of my family came round like my daughter my two daughters came round and a couple of friends so the house was busy and what we got told to do is all of us stay downstairs in the living room and Lorraine and everybody went upstairs and put the cameras in the bedrooms and they were focused on the doll's house in my room and my daughter's bed in her room because she had a lot of poltergeist activity in her bedroom as well so we could see all the act all the uh, footage on my tv downstairs because they linked it all up so it was all live so we all sat downstairs they turned all the lights off upstairs so there was no light at all up there it was pitch black we closed all the curtains and everything i think it was winter as well so it was already dark and then most we all sat downstairs and just watched it on the tv and it was really interesting so lorraine went upstairs with danny and my daughter went up my youngest daughter and my oldest daughter and they asked for them two to sit on my bed and just call out is there anybody there oh god and the other two went into the other bedroom into my daughter's bedroom and they were calling out stuff like can you tell us is anybody here come and show yourself so downstairs there's a split screen on my tv and we're watching all this footage at the same time and i wished they'd recorded it but Lorraine said we don't record any of this because it gets abused and we don't want people to see it because we take this seriously if if we film it and put it on a platform anywhere it will either get stolen by somebody else or it will get mocked or they'll say it's photoshopped or it's just been tampered with so this is for our benefit and for your benefit nobody else's so that's why we don't film it so I'm like, oh, okay, but I, I wish we had. So my youngest daughter and eldest daughter are sat on my bed. And to them, the room is pitch black. But we can see them because it's night vision camera. And from the corner of my room, in the alcove above the wardrobe, we saw all the orbs come out. And it was like hundreds just... Whew, but it was the formation of them. Now, you could say it's dust but they came in a formation and then they started to spin around my two daughters heads now i'm downstairs going oh my god and we got told not to shout or scream or nothing because it wouldn't affect them but i was sat there thinking oh my god wow but what was interesting is my daughters both at the same time went oh no oh god no oh i don't like it i don't like it i feel oh, oh and all the hackles went up at the same time that we saw the orbs going around them and Gabby became really distressed and said I don't like it I'm scared mom I've, mom mom I don't like it so we were about to just go and put the lights back on because she was getting distressed and the next to the bed which we never told them at the time because they would have died you saw this black blacker than black figure 
appearing at the side of my bed it was like it was coming up from the floor up right next to where Gabby was and Gabby went oh oh god I can feel something I know I know please stop stop so the other investigators went in and turned the light on now we'd seen a black figure forming in that room and we'd seen the orbs so my daughters came downstairs and they were both freaked out they said no I don't like it no it, you can feel something in there it's horrible you can feel the cold and and it's like a, a breeze but it's like something's touching you all the time I don't like it so they stayed downstairs and Lorraine and Danny uh, went into my bedroom and Danny sat on the bed and started calling out is there anybody there and all the orbs flew at the doll's house and I mean phew, and when they flew at the doll's house all the furniture went phew, like this and I'm like oh my god my daughter's left the house at that point because they, they couldn't cope with it I love this sort of crap so I'm not scared I'm like oh wow what the hell is this so I ended up sitting downstairs with Lorraine Every, most of the people left the house because they were freaked out and they couldn't handle it but the others went upstairs and while they were upstairs she turned round to me and she said you need to get rid of this man and this is my ex and I went well we've, kept, we've broken up I said but he won't leave she said get him out of your house and I said why and she said this activity is aimed at him it's about him and, and I said I, I don't understand and she said no please get him out you need to get rid of him he's not right there's something's just not right and and that freaked me out more than the paranormal activity because I said well he's just a harmless disabled person she went no he's not Kelly he's not anyway um while I was talking to her the chair at the back of the room by the curtain I'm going to try and find the photograph of the my room which was full of orbs always there was always stuff in there as well I saw I saw the biggest orb like this rise up from behind the settee but I saw it with my own eyes I didn't have to have a camera and I went oh my god and it started to move around and she said I'm going to tell you something now she said I'm, so I'm just keeping my out of time that orb she said is a spirit of a little girl she said and that's your little girl that you lost a long time ago and I went right she said she hasn't left you the reason that she was never born is because if she had have been born she would have been disabled and you wouldn't have coped and I went right and she said that child has stayed with you and so as your dad because he passed away when he was 42 and she said this is the little girl who's playing with the doll's house and she said I want to put something to you now when a child gets distressed they use the toys to show you what's happening and she said the reason why the daddy gets it in the doll's house is because the little girl is playing with the doll's house and she's trying to show you that your partner your ex is up to something and she doesn't like it because she can see what he's doing and she's trying to show you that she's getting him for you that she's trying to protect you and I'm like gosh and she said that's the reason why nothing happens to the rest of the house or the other dolls because they represent you and and your other children but the daddy is represented by your ex and this is a the spirit of a child and she's trying to tell you that she wants him out of the house and I thought gosh out what could he possibly have done he's just a disabled man who's got no go in him do you know what I mean that the reason why I left him is because he was always clapped out he was always unconscious and his mum and dad were middle class really decent lovely people and he was adopted and they told me that they gave him the best life he, he had a really good education he got everything he wanted but he turned to drugs when he was a teenager and it was started off being recreational and then it became um, a habit now I didn't find out till later that he was addicted to drugs he was on heroin and I had no idea 
because I was naive. I've never took drugs and I don't even know what they are. I don't. I know he injected himself, but I, I thought that was morphine from the doctor because he was in lots of pain because he'd had um, a flesh eating virus which left him disabled. And that's what I thought it was wrong with him. As it turned out, and this is all in retrospect, I discovered that he was doing black magic on me uh, because I'd ended it because I didn't want him anymore. So he was trying to keep me by doing black magic and he was doing all kinds of stuff. When he finally did leave me, which wasn't that long after this incident, um, <clears throat> he left the laptop and I managed to hack into it. And that was all done by complete accident because I didn't know how to get into it because you needed a password and it was just pure, pure accident that I got into it. When I got into the laptop, I was absolutely astounded because it had all the history on there of what he'd done. And he had been trying to find someone to kill me, which is absolutely shocking, isn't it? <laughs> he'd been trying to find someone to, to get rid of me because I didn't want him. So this is why the paranormal activity was all going on because they were trying to tell me these blokes freak there's there's something wrong with him anyway long story short the police got involved in it all he got warned to stay away and he, he has done so i'll give him that but he went through a, a time of being very bitter um and obviously he was trying to find a way to get his own back on me because i didn't want him but in the meantime the little ghost girl was telling me get him out of here and i suspect if i hadn't have had the poltergeist activity then i wouldn't have got this team in and then they wouldn't have told me to get shot of him because he was dangerous and it wouldn't have put anything in my head and i might have had him there longer than he should have been and he might have ended up doing something to me so the little girl and my dad because she said your dad's here as well um, I think saved me you just don't know do you one thing I do know is that I absolutely do believe in the paranormal I believe that we're not just here for a short time and then we're gone and we don't exist anymore I do believe there's so many different levels of existence and you can be looked after from the other side and I do absolutely believe this but that I thought that's just one of my stories i'll just tell it you now and it's all because i got triggered by this photograph of my house and that is a photograph that the estate agent took when they were selling my house in 2014 and it's still online so i thought i just i think i'll do a, a video about the doll's house so if you've had any paranormal activity it'd be interesting to hear i've had loads over years i've got so many stories about stuff like this but that one just got triggered today and i thought i'll just do a quick one on that and i'm going to come back and do a big one on eight years of being out of the rat race and where i've been for eight years and what i've done because i think that somebody might find that interesting especially in these times when more and more people are wanting to get out of it so I will see you 